Okay, here's a little video on the homework, the worksheet I gave you in class today. Zoom in and take a look at number three. Um, if we want to find the list of possible rational zeros, we need the factors of the constant all over the factors of the leading coefficient. So what are the factors of the constant? Well, the constant is this one over here. And how could we get the, the what times what is 10? Well, a 1 times 10 is 10, or also a 2 and a 5, because 2 times 5 is 10. Um, not only that, we need to put plus or minuses in front of all those numbers. And how about the factors of the leading coefficient? Well, the leading coefficient is the number that's out in front, the a value. And in this case, it's 5. So what times what is 5? It's a simple 1 and a 5. And again, we need plus or minuses. Now, from here, what we need to do is make the possible rational zeros, the, the list of possible answers. And how do we do that? We take this uh, number and place it over this denominator. So we make a fraction. So 1 over 1 is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 5 over 1 is 5, and 10 over 1 is 10. So in other words, the list is so far the same. There it is. And I've put right here the list of possible zeros. Okay. So uh, what else, though? Um, in addition to 1 over 1 and 2 over 1 and 5 over 1 and 10 over 1, we need to move on to the denominator of 5. So we have 1 over 5, we have 2 over 5, 5 over 5, and 10 over 5. So let me start writing those down. Uh, 1 over 5 is right there. We just wrote it down. Let me fix that. Sorry about that. Uh, 1 over 5. And the next one we said was 2 over 5. And if we try the next one, which is 5 over 5, we get 1. And 1 is already represented on our possible list or on our list. And then if we go to the next one, 10 over 5, it also is represented because that's 2 and 2 is already on the list. So all I need to do is put a plus or minus right in front of these fractions. And here are the list of all possible uh, rational zeros that you see right here. This is the whole list. And that's your answer for number three. And of course, if uh, this uh, function, if the a value were one, then it would be way easier because you wouldn't have denominators and it would just be that list right there. Anyways, let's move on to a different type of question on this worksheet. Um, how about down here where it says find all the real zeros? Okay, so let's practice doing that. Um, if you could do factoring by grouping, you could go ahead and do that if you feel comfortable with it. But right here on number five, factoring by grouping wouldn't even work. So I need to make a list of possible uh, real zeros or possible zeros. So I'll, again, I want to start with the factors of the constant. And that, of course, how do you get the constant 8? Well, it could be uh, 1 times 8, 2 times 4, or 8 times 1, right? And, of course, we put a plus minus in front of all those numbers. So these are all the possible answers of the constant. And now when you think about the leading coefficient factors, well, the leading coefficient's 1. So the only way you're going to get 1 is if you had a plus minus 1. And we love it when the leading coefficient is 1. Why? Because the uh, list of possible zeros is exactly this, all right? Because even if you were to take 1 over 1, 2 over 1, plus or minus 4 over plus or minus 1, you're going to get the same exact list. So the list of possible rational zeros or possible zeros is exactly this. So now that we know the list of possible zeros, we could just start picking one and using synthetic substitution to see if it's an actual answer to test it. And on this uh, particular homework assignment, a lot, of, uh, a lot of them have the answer of 1. So let's just start with the number 1, and we'll see that it, it does work. Okay, so we put 1 inside the box. We take the coefficients. This coefficient is 1. Okay, so we put 1. The next coefficient is negative 3, and then negative 6, and then 8. So let me do that. Let me put negative 3, negative 6, and then positive 8. I shouldn't have put, put there you go, 8. Now we put the line down here, and uh, what happens is the 1 comes down, and then you think, okay, uh, 1 times 1 gives me, and that's right, it gives you 1. And then you think, uh, negative 3 and 1, what does that give you when you combine it? It gives you negative 2. And then you think, 1 times negative 2 will give me negative 2. Uh -huh. And then you think, negative 6 combined with negative 2, that gives me a negative 8. And then you think, 
1 times negative 8, that's going to give me a negative 8, and that should make us feel really good because the remainder is 0, the output is 0, which means that x equals 1 is a solution because 1 worked. Yay! Now that we know that it works, what could we do with that? Well, we could factor it, right? Now, what do I mean by factor it? Well, if the answer is 1, then we could say x minus 1 was the factor. Now, what's left? We need something else. What's left, and I'll tell you what's left. You get what's left from down here, from the underneath the uh, synthetic substitution. This is your constant, this is the x, and this is the x squared. So, inside the parentheses, we're going to have x squared, and we're going to have minus 2x, and we're going to have a minus 8, okay? So now, if we continue factoring, because the inside quadratic trinomial that's in red right there, that could be factored further. Now, even if it wasn't factorable, you could use a quadratic formula to get two answers out of here. But I know it's factorable. So let me just bring down the x minus 1. Let me uh, factor this further. What times what is negative 8? That if you add together is negative 2. Well, that would be a negative 4 times a positive 2. That'll give you negative 8. And when you combine it together, it does give you a negative 2. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the factored form of f of x right there. Um, and I'm going to use this factored form to state my answers. What are my answers? Let me write it here. My answers are x equals 1, um, x equals 4, and x equals negative 2. And where did I get these answers from? I mean, I, I did it in my head. I was technically supposed to say x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. That would give me these three answers. By the way, this is a third degree polynomial. We have three answers. None of them have multiplicity. Or you could say that they all have the multiplicity of one.